Hi everybody, guess what? It's World Gin Day. Let's celebrate. And here to help us do that is our gorgeous bartender, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Nana. Happy Gin Day. Happy Gin Day to you, too. So, uh, you gonna whip up something for us with gin? I am gonna shake up a lot of good gin drinks. Yeah, let's do it. Now, a lot of people don't like gin, and they think it tastes like a pine tree. Paul, do you think it's just they're drinking terrible gin? I think they're just drinking terrible gin, or had a bad gin experience. Now, I think I used to feel the same way, but now, I can't get enough of it. I love gin, but that's because I'm drinking some good stuff. And there are a lot of kinds of gins, right? There are, many kinds. And they're all very different. Yes. In terms of types of gin, we have <laughs> things like uh, London dry gin, which is a certain type. Like it says, it's dry, so it's not gonna have that sweetness. It's gonna be not astringent, but it's gonna have that kind of dry feeling. Mm -hmm. But most gin's gonna have a dryness to it anyway, because it's, it's a spirit. You're gonna have mod truly modern gins where they're gonna do all kinds of things. You're supposed to have juniper, at least some essence of it to be called a gin. But, but they have a no... lot of other bot botanicals in them, right? Correct. They can taste very different. So you have, you know, sometimes you may have upwards, uh, like a Monkey 47 gin, for instance, that's a high shelf, nice gin mm. from Germany that literally has 47 different flavor elements that are coming from different botanicals. That's a lot of flavors. So that's what's fun about gin though, is that of all the different spirits, it probably has the widest array mm. of flavors. Mm -hmm. It's gonna feel familiar most of the time. You're gonna know it's a gin because it's got botanicals infused, but there's gonna be something you like. And right. even if you hated gin because you had a banned gin experience because it came from a bathtub and or whatever, <laughs> then it's- In 1928, I was making it in my bathtub. Correct. So, and that's why a lot of mixed drinks use all these high flavors because they were trying to tamp down the flavor right. of the bad spirit. Mm -hmm. So we don't have bad spirits in this place. No bad spirits in here. This house is clean. <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> exercise the bad spirits. Uh, so today, you wanna to talk about the cocktails we're gonna make? I'm featuring? so excited to know what we're gonna be drinking tonight. So one of the my favorite drinks to make from gin is a gimlet, mm -hmm. a gin gimlet. And it's a very simple recipe where it's using lime juice, some kind of sugar or simple syrup is what we typically use, and gin. Mm -hmm. You can fancy it up and put bitters or things like that, and so you should play around with it. But the, the straightforward recipe is what we're gonna do today with a gin gimlet. We're gonna do two riffs on the gimlet as well. One is the south side where we add mint, Ooh, fresh mint. I love mint. And then the east side where you add both mint and cucumber. Oh, I really love cucumber. This so, is going to be great. So we have lots of options and you should play around. Like if you're a home bartender, you should play with the proportions a little bit, add some things that you like. You could add rosemary, you could add other things and look at what kind of botanicals are in the gin and right. then kind of play to the strengths of that particular gin, sure, which is what we're going to be sense. doing with these three here. Mm, great. Okay. So we have several types of gin that we're going to use, but for the gimlet, we're going to use Plymouth gin. And Plymouth Gin is a London dry gin that's still made in London. Mm. So, so, ready for me, a gimlet? Yeah, tell me what you're gonna do. Okay, two mm. ounces of our London dry gin. So have you always liked gin or did you think it tasted like a pine tree too? The first one I tasted I didn't like, mm. but it was, it wasn't good. Yeah. And so I just tried another kind of gin and that's what you should do if you don't yeah. like it. Three quarter ounce of lime juice and we need three quarter ounce just regular simple syrup and like we said you can adjust the simple syrup depending on how sweet you want this drink can't get much simpler than that when you have three ingredients small ingredient cocktails are kind of nice ready I love the sound All right, we're gonna use one of these nice rocks glasses for what we're doing this time. All right, here we go. Garnish with, with a lime wheel, a gimlet. Oh my goodness. Look at that, there she is. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's so good. 
It's simple, um, but it does take me back to the 1920s. <laughs> I mean, you are vintage. I feel, I feel right at home with this drink. This gimlet is delicious and it's a classic and I can understand why it works really well with just a classic gin because the lime is kind of the star of the show here, right? Right, that's so the you, idea. Yeah, and it is working for me. It's working real well. And remember, fresh lime juice, don't, yeah, no bottles. Yeah, fresh lime juice, people. It's easy to squeeze. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of squeezing, what's next? All right. What do you got for us? I've got another one, a riff. Uh, but first, let's introduce the gin that we're going to use. Oh, yes, please. This gin is called the Botanist, and this one is from mm -hmm. Scotland. This one is going to really work, I think, even better with the next drink we're going to make. Because of its complexity, it's going to hold up to an additional element, element that we're going to have. Yes, okay. So the element that we're going to add is mint. I love mint. And when you add mint to a fresh mint into a gimlet before you shake it, that's going to be called a south side. Okay, so we'll take our, the botanists, and again, two ounces. Really like that bottle. It's a great bottle. Yeah. You know, you, people eat with their eyes first because they want to see the plate looks pretty and everything. You should drink a little bit with your eyes first and find a bottle. Don't rely just on the bottle, just like a book, but if it's a nice bottle, it's probably going to have some nice stuff in it. Then we'll do our three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, and we don't use the bottle stuff, and our three quarters simple syrup. And you can adjust this based on your desired level of sweetness, and don't forget to add your mint. Best thing to do for mint is just kind of put it in this way. That just kind of releases some of those aromas. Get ourselves some ice in here. Ready? I'm so ready. <laughs> now we're going to use these nice Nicanoras. I know you like Nicanoras. My favorite. And again, if you want to double strain to get those little pieces of mint out. But I actually kind of like it. It gives a little more rustic look. And you can tell there's actually mint in there. And then, of course, Garnish with a little sprig of mint. There you have a south side. But be careful because that garnish is probably going to fall out. Into my mouth. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, this is a great combination. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. It's so good. And that gin is nice. Mm -hmm. I'm so, a fan. So it does hold up to that, that extra. I guess the Scots know how to make gin too. They do. What's coming up next? All right. So we're going to move to the other side of town. Uh, how you doing with that? So good, y'all. OK. All right. <laughs> this is the first time Nightcap has featured three drinks, so Nana's having fun. It's so much fun. I wish I could do this every night. But we're moving to the east side. That's right. That's where we're going. So we're going to move from the south side to the east side. So for this one, we're going to move to a different gin as well, but we're going to stay in Scotland. And Hendrix is a, a go-to for a lot of people when they think about gin from Scotland. I didn't realize that Hendrix was from Scotland. Right. I think a lot of people don't mm -hmm. realize that. Uh, but yes, proudly Scott. Uh, and this one is often served with cucumber. Ooh, I love cucumber. Did I say that before? I'm saying it again. I love cucumber. Right. Cucumber is that kind of nice, clean, fresh, fresh. It's from the garden. It's that it, it kind of evokes certain emotions too, mm. because it just has that that freshness. You think of springtime. Uh, some people don't like cucumber, which which is fine. You don't have to serve it with cucumber. Right. But cucumber can be divisive. That's true, but it works really well with Hendrix, and they decided that from what they were doing some tasting that. Yeah, it really works. It, it, it marries quite nicely with the Hendrix gin. So we're going to use Hendrix for our east side, which has what flavor element? Cucumber. Exactly. So we'll do two ounces of our Hendrix gin. You need to get some lime juice in here. Three quarter ounce into the tin. And once again, 
You can decide this level of sweetness for yourself. I am doing three quarters of an ounce regular simple syrup. And we need to have some like chunks of cucumber. You can muddle these if you want to, but the shaking process actually does, does quite make, well with the with agitation from the, okay. from the ice cubes. But if you really want to get that cucumber yes. extra flavor, then muddle them, just kind of press them a little bit. And then we also need our mint. Let's have the mint. We'll get the mint in there. I like this synchronized thing happening here. <laughs> it's a shake and shimmy. Okay, and we're gonna each have one here. So we're gonna use a nice mm, coupe glass. glass. Again, if you want to double strain to get rid of the, the small pieces, you can do that. But this gives you that nice rustic look. And so you know that you've got minty cucumber in there. And we will add our little cucumber slice. What's fun is you can just take a little piece of mint Put in there. Oh, I see how you're doing it. And there we go. An east side. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna garnish mine. Oh. What do you think, Nana? Is this working I for mean, you? The presentation is a 10. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, the cucumber as it's coming toward my nose is amazing. Right. Oh, shoot, that's good. Well, I can't think of a better way to celebrate World Gin Day than with these amazing cocktails that Paul has made for us. They're just all amazing in their own way, and they all have featured a different gin and highlighted the aspects of that gin. This is just amazing. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Oh, so fun. Well, cheers, y'all. I hope you're all celebrating World Gin Day in your own way with your favorite gin. Cheers, everybody.